retired teacher now. I started to sponsor a child in exile from Tibet ten years ago now because we had, um, I used to do, well I still do yoga and in our summer school the teachers would come to teach us for free but we would still pay and they used the money to send to you in the Tibetan community sponsorship so um, they brought in some files of the children and their plight and their education and that's how I got interested in it, really. So, um, for me personally, uh, I've got two sons of my own, so I chose to sponsor a girl. Um, one to give more chance, because girls often miss out on education, I think, in, in India and Tibet, or at least the boys get priority sometimes. So I thought it would be nice to, to choose a girl and to see her grow up, really. And I've been lucky enough to be able to, you know, quite easily afford to, watch her go from, do you want to see? <laughs> she, she started off as this tiny little child <laughs> 10 years ago and looked very forlorn at coming to school on her first day and a little bit frightened. And now Deshin is this lovely young lady who writes to me uh, regularly and is now in college, um, sort of sixth form college I suppose it would be here. Uh, and it's been great to see just one individual progress in that way. And I keep all the letters um, from when she first started to, to write at all. And she always draws, and it's lovely. <laughs> um, she's very interested in, in drawing. And she very, very often comes top of the class. So it's, it's really nice. And has been school captain as well. So it's, it's really nice. So that's how I got into it. It is probably a, the, one of the most worthwhile things that you can do to sponsor a child's education. None of us know the future, none of us can speak for tomorrow. Hmm? But I think the one thing is, that, as I said earlier, it's absolutely certain is that without education, you have no future. That is just a statement of fact. So anyone who wants to sponsor a, a child, a Tibetan child, A, I think can be 100% certain that child will do everything it can to respond to the sponsorship. And this will not be money wasted. I have never yet met a Tibetan child who doesn't appreciate being sponsored and doesn't know that the only thank you it can truly give is to do its very, very best at school or at college in whatever field it's taken into. And that is an enormous reward for the sponsor. Um, why I chose, if you like, because in schools they're always asking teachers and children to sponsor children on the other side of the world, um, but quite a lot of the sponsorships that were available then were for a child, say, in another country who was going to become a Christian in order to get 
the sponsorship or you were sponsoring through a, a Catholic school or something like this. But I was very interested in that Deshin's been able to keep her Tibetan um, identity and to learn to speak Tibetan even though she can only live in India. So I wanted to help someone keep their culture rather than change it, I suppose. That's why I chose this. Yeah. My name's Dan Beard. I uh, hitchhiked through China and Tibet um, in 96, 97 and fell in love with Tibet and uh, was heartbroken by Tibet at the same time. So when I came back through India, Sri Lanka and stuff, um, I came back to the UK, I, um, I joined Free Tibet campaign and then somehow Kunsung, she got in touch with me and I started to sponsor a child in Tibet and that was quite a while ago, so every month I've been paying £15 to help Tibetan children. And as you say, um, it's my little piece of uh, passive resistance against the Chinese by educating Tibetan people. My name is Ing Swan Ko, and uh, I came from Malaysia, um, Chinese origin, and I've been sponsoring, I think, since 1995-96, just about 20 years. Saw an article uh, when I uh, went to the Barbican Centre to see the Dalai Lama's talk. I think it was 95. So I pick up this leaflet which talks about the Tibetan children, the charity, and I decided that I'd like to do something to help the children. So I started two, two children sponsoring. My name is Tawa Kelsang and uh, I've been sponsoring most probably, I've been in this country for 14 years, so most probably nine to 10 years uh, since I've started sponsoring Tibetan children, children or a child. My name's Angela, I'm 34, and I've been a Buddhist for 15 years. So I was looking for a charity to support when I started working, and obviously Tibet's a, a very important cause, and with His Holiness being such an amazing leader, that I thought it would be a good charity to support. She is an inspiration because she always writes so beautifully. So she's an inspiration. I've used her letters in an assembly in school when I used to teach because she has it's quite quirky English, as you can imagine, because she's learning, and quite often she finishes the letter by saying, and now I rest my dancing pen, um, your loving daughter. And it's nice to have that sort of contact with a, an individual you may never meet, but you know that she works so hard. I think just one year she came second or third, and she usually comes first or second. And her letter was so apologetic, I will try harder next time. So she's making the best of every single opportunity you can give her. And really the amount we're giving is like you say, it's three or four coffees, isn't it? A month is what you might spend in a week on coffee. You know, having a cup of coffee with a friend. So you're having a cup of coffee with a friend, <laughs> in a way, across the world. And she, she gets her education. Um, given to her and she's very grateful and it's nice to see her develop from that little scrap of a child to a beautiful educated young woman and education will never ever be wasted and she herself now has become an inspiration to people I taught who perhaps had forgotten their homework or said that it's too hard to do I'd say hey look at this you know because she works hard every day you know, we f we feel so useless with the whole uh, Chinese thing going on. It's, it's just a little something that we could do. And I suppose when you when you know, almost 20 years later, 3,000 pounds later, and how many kids I've managed to educate, help them keep the Tibetan language going, cultures going, um, because without the Tibetan community and all these other sort of campaigns going on around the world. Uh, unfortunately, um, Tibetan culture would just wither away. So it's, uh, you know, it's one of the most precious cultures in the world and it's our way of keeping it going. Um, I've been sponsoring Pasang for 10 years. She was four and now she's 15. Um, I'm disabled. I've had 29, no sorry, nine operations. I take 23 tablets a day, including morphine throughout the day. So my day is quite difficult, quite painful. Um, I had to give up my work several years ago. So now I live just on my disability benefit. 
but if I can live just on disability benefit and pay for a child to go to school, then I really think anybody can. I've really enjoyed coming here today, so if you could do this every couple of years just for us all to meet, it would make us feel, um, I suppose it makes us feel really wanted and, and thank you very much for today. Uh, my name is Brian Bowles and I attended a Tibetan cultural event in the 90s and there was a little stall or a stand where people were being invited to sponsor a Tibetan child and really I didn't know anything about it and I thought okay I'll give it a go. Well that was something like uh, 20 years ago and uh, three children ago. I'm on to my third Tibetan uh, pupil currently. So that's how it started and uh, I it's quite painless. Uh, the money comes out of my account every month. I don't notice it because it's not a huge amount, but I think it, it makes a big difference to them. And then I try, but don't always remember uh, Christmas and birthdays. And there's interaction between myself, obviously, and the, uh, the young people that I'm sponsoring. It seems to make a difference. My mother, she actually, she's a sponsor as well. And um, she writes to her child every month and stuff. And she calls her mummy and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and they have a relationship going on. So my mother is very, um, she really enjoys like, communicating with them. I should communicate more. Uh, but I have enjoyed receiving my uh, Christmas cards. But um, one day I would love to go to Northern India to um, see some of the children, hopefully meet one of mine. I have been brought up in Tibetan community in Pailakupi. And, uh, and then I've been to boarding school like two years and I did my nursing in India and uh, I always want to give back something to my community and I feel that uh, I owe so much to my community and uh, I thought the best way I can help do something is to sponsor a child so I've done that through the Tibetan, Tibetan community because I always felt the Department of Education is the best way through which I can do something. I was told today that I'm one of the longest sponsors and as I say it started in the mid-1990s and uh, I've sponsored three children and the, um, the third is still undergoing his education. I've been sponsoring, sponsoring him for about five years I think now. And he's great. I mean he, I get uh, Christmas cards and letters and he tells me what's happening with him and his family. Uh, and. It's very moving because his, uh, the life of his parents, particularly, I think is very, very difficult. And basically, without sponsorship from people from the West, and it really is a very, very small amount compared with our normal everyday outgoings, without sponsorship from the West, that boy wouldn't get an education. His parents would be really, really stretched. And at least it takes the pressure off them. And they know that he's going to receive a good, ed good education no matter what, and it will help not only them, It'll be for his life in the future and will help the Tibetan community, which is all to the good. Boy, it needs it. Jinda Mangboji Chikdong Kubya Kuju Kosum Koji Tendan Kotsu Yotin Tandagi Nashim Barisha, the Negashe Narang Moshimat and the Kimij Tirin de Page of Kundu Kurangi Pugunila Dawala Gomus Inji Gomo Sumjusum Jutangwa, the Michigi Gomusum Jusum Jutandu Deni Mangbush Tali or Wala. Any m Kunzu Jinda Mangje and Pe Simsu Chimburisha, Tandangalat Karsig to Sina. My, uh, my name is uh, Sonam Tsering Frasi. Uh, the, the reason really uh, why I started the Tibetan Refugee Charitable Trust 
way back in 1986 was uh, the Tibetan community in Britain had a sponsorship scheme already uh, existing at that time. And because of the background in my education with accounts and trust, and especially in the trust law, I saw the benefit of uh, a tax reclamation for the donations that the trust will receive, thereby increasing the amount of <coughs> donations that each sponsor gives to the uh, child's education scheme. Therefore, we can increase the amount and further increase the reach of the uh, education uh, where children are necessary. Uh, the reason why I started or why I thought of starting the trust mainly is because we had a sponsorship scheme already, it's a mechanic that will separate the Tibetan community in Britain from the Tibetan Refugee Charitable Trust, which will be a charity wing. The reason, another reason was the Tibetan community in Britain had a role at that point where we had to play political activities and the trusts main aim is non-political and specifically looking at the education and well-being of Tibetans in India. People who can help our society through small contribution is, I think uh, at the moment it costs 180 pounds, 15 pounds each month. It, it is uh, life-changing for somebody, uh, some young child who hasn't got the education opportunity living in some remote settlements and this will be a very good A benefit for the Tibetan society, B it is uh, uh, encouraging as well as a self uh, prestige for who can help thinking that they are also a uh, little bit well off than people in India and who needs help and you are making a small contribution for the society to be better.